felt weird used to saying, what a long string trip it's been. I was never quite sure what he meant until this fall. I can honestly say that the insect pressure this season was the most unusual and unexpected I've experienced in a long while. A quick look at the both recent and historic data on pest abundance recorded from our University of Arizona research plots suggests that insect pressure this fall was historically low for some pests, while unusually heavy for other pests compared with previous years. You can check the document Pest Abundance on Desert Produce and Melon Crops in 2016 at the Cooperative Extension website. Whitefly. Area-wide whiteflies in fall melons were at the lowest levels we've measured over the past 10 years. Accordingly, CYSDB, Kirby Yellow Stunning Disease Virus, incidence at harvest and cantaloupe fields was the lowest we've seen since the virus fish showed up in 2007. The virus Incidence was very low in Texas Hill and Wilton, but a few hot spots were observed in roll in fields adjacent to late terminated cotton. For the most part, white flies were light in produce crops with an occasional flare up in some isolated areas like Wilton. On Bagrata, where did all the Bagrata bugs go this year? They were so light in my research plot that. We were not able to conduct any efficacy trials this fall. In fact, Bagrata abundance was the lowest we have observed since invasive stink bug first showed up in 2010. Light populations appeared in early October, but never increased uh, to the high numbers we typically see during October. Western flower thrips. On the other hand, where did all the thrips come from, especially the bean thrips? The thrips pressure this fall was heaviest I've experienced in a long time. I often don't conduct many fall thrips trials because the numbers are often too light and variable, but this year was the exception, the highest counts we have recorded since doing fall trials. And to top that, being thrips were extremely heavy in early October, the most I've seen in Yuma to date. Flea beetles prolonged heavy activity during September and early October. First time in several years, we were able to get some good field efficacy trials in seasonal broccoli. Received numerous reports in September from PCAs struggling to keep feeding damage to a minimum. Can still find a few around. Beet army worm, cabbage looper, and corn earworm. Nothing too unusual here. Population abundance. On untreated lettuce at the Umatic Center this fall was higher than last year but lower than 2014. Activity has slowed considerably in recent years with the cooler weather. Overall, corn earworm was light. Diamondback moth. Without a doubt, this was the most surprising and severe pest to show up in Yuma this fall. In 26 years as an entomologist in Yuma, I have never seen diamondback moth outbreaks like what occur in isolated fields of transplanted broccoli cabbage and cauliflower in October and November. PCAs are still battling the past. Most years you can rarely find them on fall crops and they were almost non-existent in my research plots this fall. In some respects it reminded me of the white fly outbreaks of the early 1990s. Caution, this may not be over. Diamondback moth larvae are starting to show up in direct seeded crops and there are plenty of moths moving around. The cold weather will slow them down for a while, but be prepared for a battle when temperatures pick up back again in January and February. Let's hope for a hard freeze this winter. Not sure what happened yet, but we're working on the problem and we'll hopefully have some useful recommendations by the spring. In the meantime, keep on trucking.